ಭಾಗವತಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಶಲಾಖಯ ಚಕ್ಷುವನ್ಮೀಲಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಕಾಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೂನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ್ಚ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪಂ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಖಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಚೈತನ್ಯದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸಹ ಗಣಲಿತಾ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಷ್ಟಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ಯತೆ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಪಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೋ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಾಯು ಅಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತ್ಯುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿಕಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕೀ ನಂದನಾಯ ಚಂದಗೋಪಕುಮಾರ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸಂಡೇ ಫೀಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಅಟ್ ಶೇಷಾದ್ರಿಪುರಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ 
very happy to be with all of you here. This is the first uh, temple from where SNG, um, Sri Narsim Giridhari Mandir at uh, South Bangalore, ICC, they all expanded from here. So I used to come here many, many years ago when there was a seven or eight member committee here. So many of them are very, very senior leaders now have taken up responsibility in different parts of Bangalore and other places. But uh, I remember this temple fondly uh, due to my regular visits here and Anupal Kesha Prabhu is always welcoming. Thank you Anupal Kesha Prabhu, Dandar Pranam. And Dandar to Bhaktivinoda Prabhu also. <laughs> also all other devotees. We are uh, doing from this chapter Narada's instructions on Srimad Bhagavatam. Very, very famous chapter. Fourth and sixth chapter. Narada is pouring out his uh, personal realizations from personal life incidents to his very dear disciple Vedavyas. So let us read this 1535. Yeah. Yeah, that's the karma. Bhagavat Paritoshanam Jnanam Jattat Adhinam Hi Bhakti Yoga Samanditam All Prabhuji is together. Jadat Prakriyate Karma Bhagavat Paritoshanam Jnanam Jattat Adhinam Hi Bhakti Yoga Samanditam all Matajis together. Bhakti Yoga. They got the meter exactly, huh? Sometimes I sing in one meter and uh, all people sing in different, different meters. But they capture the right meter. Give them an applause. Very good. Yeah. Whatever. Atra, in this life or world, kriyate, thus perform, karma, work, bhagavat, unto the personality of Godhead, paritoshanam, satisfaction of, jnanam, knowledge, yatat, what is so called? Adhinam, dependent. He, certainly. Bhakti Yoga, with devotional service. Samanvitam, though tailed. Whatever work is done here in this life for the satisfaction of the mission of the Lord is called Bhakti Yoga or transcendental loving service to the Lord. And what is called knowledge becomes a concomitant factor. Is going to come? With my mic with you and read the report. And there is. The general and popular notion is that by discharging fruity work in terms of the direction of the scriptures, one becomes perfectly able to acquire transcendental knowledge for spiritual realization. Bhakti Yoga is considered by some to be another form of karma. But factually, Bhakti Yoga is above both karma and jnana. Bhakti Yoga is independent of jnana or karma. On the other hand, jnana and karma are dependent on Bhakti Yoga. This Kriya Yoga or Karma Yoga as recommended by Sri Narada to Vyasa, 
is specifically recommended because the principle is to satisfy the Lord. The Lord does not want his sons, the living beings, to suffer the threefold miseries of life. He desires that all of them come to him and live with him. But going back to Godhead means that one must purify himself from material infections. from the material affection. This purification means attainment of spiritual knowledge. Therefore, knowledge is dependent on karma or work done on behalf of the Lord. Other knowledge being devoid of bhakti yoga or satisfaction of the Lord cannot lead one back to the kingdom of God, which means that it cannot even offer salvation as already explained in connection with the stanza beginning, next Ranjana, that was. Huh? The conclusion is that a devotee engaged in the unalloyed service of the Lord, specifically in hearing and chanting of his transcendental glories, becomes simultaneously spiritually enlightened by the divine grace. <coughs> as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> so Narada is uh, enlightening uh, Veda Vyasa, but Veda Vyasa is a literary incarnation of the Lord. You know? So naturally he is all-knowing. Nevertheless, for all of us, he is instructing something very important. You see, Today, I think many people are celebrating Ganesh Chaturthi, I think. Correct, huh? Mm -hmm. So, the Ganesha is very famous. That's like Hanuman is very famous in India. Huh? People worship Ganesha with great pomp everywhere. Mm -hmm. According to our Acharyas, Ganesha is a pure devotee. Mm -hmm. And his uh, worshipable deity is Lord Narasimha Deva. So, one amazing similarity you will see. Um, like Lord Shiva, his worshipable deity is Sankarshan. Sankarshan. So when Sankarshan is emanating fire at the time of dissolution, huh, that Kalagni is called as Shiva. So Shiva also does Samhar, Sankarshan also does Samhar. Samhar means destruction. Both, correct now? Now, Sankarshan also has reddish eyes. He is upset that the living entities are, have not utilized their opportunity to perfect their lives, but they have wasted their lives, so he is upset. Sankarshan has eyes red, so Shiva also does destruction. And Shiva has a snake around his neck. Why? Because by looking at the snake, he remembers his worshipable deity, Adi Shesha, Sankarshan. He gets Samadhi quickly. It's called Uddipan. Just like in a, in a, in the halls, we put pictures of the Lord. Why? Because when you look at those pictures, you remember Krishna and the Bhagavad like that. In the same manner, um, our Narsimha Deva and Ganesha also. Narsimha Deva is called the Vigna Harita, correct? No? Bhakti Vigna Vinashak Narsimha Deva Bhagavan Ki. Say, correct? No? The same manner, Ganesha is also called as Vigna Harita. So both have similar characteristics, correct? But Ganesha puts his trust in the lotus feet of Narasimha and gets charged. Just like he put mobile for charging. Gets the power from Narasimha. Then comes Ganesha. He can remove the obstacles. Huh? Afterwards. So that poor is a pure devotee. Hmm. So once upon a time, when uh, Veda Vyas decided that all the Vedic literature should be put down in writing, because Kaliuga is just starting and the living entities in Kali Yuga cannot even remember their mobile number also. Mm -hmm. no? Even for a nine digit, ten digit, they have to take a pen and paper and note down. So they may forget all the stokas and the, uh, you know, by hearing they may not remember everything. So we should put down everything in writing. Mm -hmm. Keeping that in mind, whether we have invited all the demigods, who would like to become my stenographer? No? 
So I will dictate and you have to take the dictation and put down everything in writing. Many demigods came with their scribe and everything because it's a very uh, laudable service, isn't it? Hmm? Because imagine it's going to be recorded in golden letters that you are the one who wrote down all the Vedic literature on the dictation of Vedic Vyas. For all time to come, you will get a good name. Who will not want that? Hmm? But then Vedic has put conditions that when I am dictating, I will dictate non-stop. And you cannot say I have to go for one in between. Hmm? <laughs> so you cannot take any break. Only when I give break, you can take. Other times you have to continuously write. So many of them backed out. Hmm? And he also said, you should never ask, eh? second time. Eh? Some people ask me, eh? never say that. Continuously you should write. If you ask second time, it will be considered offensive. Then many more demigods backed out. They said, this is too much. And everything in Sanskrit you have to write. How can you not ask for the second time? Eh? Like that, one by one, all of them um, pulled out. But all of them considered Ganesha to be most qualified. Hmm? Very intelligent Ganesha. He's a good listener. Huh? <laughs> Very intelligent. I will tell you Ganesha why he's intelligent with another past time I tell you. But now you can know he's very intelligent. All devatas also felt it. So when he was put in the front, Ganesha agreed to take up the task. So Veda Vyas would dictate and Ganesha would write. Ganesha was so fast that he would write past and look up. And Veda Vyas thought that my lad, I can't catch up with his speed. Huh? So then, uh, Vedavya has made some of the shlokas very gentle, very difficult, so that Ganesh will take some time to write and he can relax a little bit. Hmm. So, in this way, he put down all in writing. Thanks to Ganesh for making all the Vedic literature available to us by taking the dictation and doing this valuable service, Seva. Once upon a time, Mother Parvati got one mango and uh, she thought, I have two children, but I only have one mango. Huh? Isn't it? So, in the Bhagavatam, there is one verse. When Rukmini goes to, in Avanti, Rukmini lives in Avanti, right now. Avanti is where? Vidarbha. Vidarbha. Sorry, not Avanti. I mean, uh, she is living in Vidarbha. And Kaundinyapur. Kaundinyapur. Avanti is in near Ujjain. This is Kaundinyapur, where Rukmini was born in uh, Vidarbha. Near Amravati. So when her marriage uh, was uh, uh, supposed to be with Krishna, to attain Krishna, she went to a Nambika's temple. Namasye Tvambike Adikshnam Swasantana Yuvam Shivam Bhuyat Patirme Bhagavan Krishna Stat Anumodatam. Like that, she is praying. So what is she saying? Namasye. To Ambike Abhikshnam, she is telling my, I offer my obeisances to Ambika. Who is Ambika? Durga, yeah, Durga. Huh? Santana Shiva Vitam. You are sitting with Shiva on your side and your two children. Who are they? Gate and Ganesh. No? <clears throat> Bhuyat Patirme Bhagavan, she is telling. May Krishna become my husband. Bhuyat Patirme Bhagavan. Krishna Stat Anumodatam, she is telling. Please uh, look at me favorably and bless me that Krishna will become my husband, like this is praying. So, in the temple where she went, there was Shiva, Parvati and the two children sitting, uh, Ganesha and uh, Kartikeya on their lap. So, Mother Parvati is telling Ganesha and Kartikeya that, I only have one mango, let us see who will, you know, win this competition. Whoever can go around the world and come back, uh, first to me, they will get the mango. Immediately, Kartikeya, you know, he is very technically sound. Huh? You know, he has his peacock. He arranged his peacock in the evening. Next day, early morning, Mangala at the time, he got up. Huh? And then sat on the peacock. He started traveling across the globe. Got into action. So, and what do you think Ganesha will do? Ganesh, the previous night, only thought, I only have a mushik, which is a small rat. Huh? Definitely, I can't catch up with my brother. Maybe I may be older brother, he may be younger. But in speed, he is faster. Huh? I can't catch up with his speed. So, whenever in your life you are confused what you should do, go to your guru. So, he immediately went to Narada. 
bowed down to him and said, Oh Naraji, I am I have run out of ideas. I don't know how will I win this competition mother has given. But Guru means very heavy, very you are very knowledgeable. You know what should I do? What is your instruction for me? Narada said, that's very easy. <clears throat> he said, I will give you something. So he took a leaf and wrote, wrote something and wrapped it in a silken cloth, gave it to Ganesh and said, if you give it to your mother and circumambulate your mother and father thrice, you will get the mango. Narada said. And I said, that's easy. For that, I don't need mushik also. I can myself do it. <laughs> so he happily went back and gave the silken cloth to mother. He had full faith in the Guru's words. Huh? And then he circumambulated her three times. So Shiva and Parvati were sitting. So Parvati opened and saw it was a leaf in which Rama was written. So she gave it to Shiva and Shiva touched it to his head. Huh? They both had a big smile on their face. They were very grateful for receiving the gift of the holy name, hmm? which is not different from the holy lord. Hmm? Very happy. Now, Kartika has returned back in the evening, naturally tired, after the, going all day around the world. Huh? So, Parvati Mata said, See, Kartika, Ganesha, both of you come here. She told Kartika, you certainly are very competent. Huh? You are very hardworking and competent. You went around the world and came. But let me tell you one thing. In this world, four people are very important for you. Your mother, your father, Guru and Krishna. Mother is the first god for a child. As soon as the child is born, whom does he see first? Mother. Then the child is drinking milk from mother's breast. So the mother is giving life to the child. He has born the child in the womb for nine months. Now... Uh, the child doesn't know anybody besides the mother. And the child is seeing one man is coming and going. And the child is asking, who is this fellow? Mother is saying, hey, that's your father. And the child is thinking, he must be a good man. He's helping my mother. Huh? But eventually he understands. Father is also very important. Huh? Then mother so shows hand to the father. Then the father later on sends the child to Gurukula, to the Guru, so that the child can become enlightened. And Guru shows hand to God. Huh? Ultimately, then the child understands, oh, God's love is manifesting in my life through Guru's love and parents' love. Whatever love these parts and parcels of the Lord are giving, it's ultimately now I have found out the source. Aham Sarvasya. Oh. Then one becomes completely sold out to the Supreme Lord. Hmm? So, in this way, these four people are very important. And then mother told her, you see, Ganesha, he went to his Guru and bowed down his head bowed his head to Guru and he got Guru's blessings. And Guru gave him the gift of the holy name which he gave and submitted to parents. So, that means the holy name is non-different from the Supreme Lord. Plus, he circumambulated the parents who represent the whole world for the child. So, in this way, he has respected all the four who are the most important people in this world. So, you are you may have competence, but your brother has character, very high character. <laughs> so he will get the mango, like that she said. So then she called Ganesha and gave the mango. Ganesha thought, whatever Guru said became true. Huh? Very happy. But Kartika became very upset. He said, what is this? I went around the world and came. So much hard work I did. Huh? You didn't give me anything. So he said, I am going to South India. Huh? So, so he went to a place called Padani. Huh? So the Padani name came from Padamni Yappa, like that, that's a song. Eh? Padamni Yappa means, hey Kartikeya, my son, why do you need a mango? You yourself are like a ripe mango. You are such a beautiful darling. Huh? Don't worry, your brother will get a mango and you are our darling. He said, your sweet talk is good enough. Huh? I am going, tada, you went to this. Hmm? Anyway, mother said, okay, you be in Padani and we will come and meet you time to time. Hmm? Pretty good. So, in this way, Ganesha is a very wise one, very intelligent one. Yeah, he is teaching us that we should take shelter of Guru. And, and he knew how to tackle a complex problem. When Arjuna was in trouble, he took shelter of Krishna. 2.7 Bhagavad Gita. Isn't it? So, all confusions are cleared when one walks the path of Guru, what Guru has laid down. So, 
In this way, Ganesha is worshipped as a pure devotee of the Supreme Lord. There are many more pastimes on Ganesha like this. Hmm. There are some pastimes in relation to Krishna also. So, but the verse which we read today, my purport is talking something very important. That your bhakta's activities appear to be the activities of any ordinary person externally. Okay. Arjuna has a chariot, Duryodhana has a chariot. Arjuna has horses, Duryodhana has horses. Arjuna has bow and arrow, Duryodhana has bow and arrow. Arjuna is fighting, Duryodhana is fighting. So externally everything appears similar, the same. But there's a gulf of difference between the two people. It's like earth and sky difference. Arjuna is fighting to please Krishna. Because Arjuna actually didn't want to fight. Krishna even told him, it's a see. But then Arjuna said, Karishye Vachanam. Karishye Vachanam Mama or Tava? Tava. Huh? Initially he said, Karishye Vachanam Mama. I will do what I want. Finally he said, Karishye Vachanam. Whatever you say, I will do. He surrendered. So that means Arjuna is uh, performing the battle for whose pleasure? Krishna's pleasure. And Duryodhana, he was still telling his father, these Pandavas are five and we are hundred. They have seven Akshwanis, we have eleven. Let us wipe them out once and for all from the planet and enjoy an unrivaled kingdom. Father, you make arrangements in such a way that I will be able to accomplish this goal. I will be happy, you will be happy. <laughs> this was Duryodhana's talk. Yudhishthir Maharaj said, why are we fighting like a pack of dogs for a piece of meat? No. Let us cooperate with our brothers and divide the world and enjoy. Let us not fight and leading to a great war with a lot of bloodshed. This is still marriage. This is still Arjuna. They all have similar mindset. Daivi Sampar. Very, very divine mindset. Because they were guided by two great personalities. Krishna and Bhishma. So Bhishma guided Yudhishthira Maharaj in many of the Chatriya related duties. When Bhishma was about to leave the world also, in the Sankranti time, before that Krishna asked Yudhishthira to inquire about him, about Raja Dharma, Sri Dharma, all the different Dharmas, so that KT can happen. Because a very great personality is going to leave the world now. So he will do knowledge transfer to Yudhishthira. Then he can rule the world subsequently. Correct, no? So, in this way, they were faithful followers of these two great personalities. And Krishna is Supreme Lord and Bhishma is one of the Mahajans. They are following the Lord and the Mahajan. So, their victory is certain for the Pandavas. But Duryodhana is guided by his own mind, whimsical mind, devilish mind. You can see that. So, the externally activities may look similar, but there is a big difference. I remember when I was a small kid, my father brought a Ganesh from the market and brought it. So we used to put flowers, garland. My mother used to make mother come, you know, and offer to Ganesh and everything. But I saw after seven days, you know, they, my father took the Ganesh and I asked, where are you taking? Let Ganesh be at home. He said, no, we have to put him in the well. You know, I started crying. Hmm? Ganesh is so beautiful, why do you put him in the well? He said, that's a ritual, we don't know why. But we have to do it. I was very sad to know that poor Ganesh has gone into well. I didn't know why at that time. Later on, as I grew up and learned the philosophy, I, I came to know there is something called as Panchopasana. Panchopasana is instituted by impersonalists. In the impersonalist path, they follow that. Um, they worship uh, Surya, they are called Shauryas. They worship Shakti called as Shaktas. They worship Ganapati called Ganapatyas. They worship Shiva called as Shaivas. Then they worship Vishnu called as Vaishnavas. These five people, their understanding of worship of God is, you bring a Murti, worship, because if you have some form, form on which you concentrate your attention and develop some affection, that will help you to withdraw your mind from the material attachments of the outside world. Hmm? So you withdraw yourself and then chant some name 
you know, whatever God's name you want to chant, you chant and then keep that murti. After some time, you can put the murti in the water by doing visarja. Yeah. Because you don't need murti now, you become advanced now, you don't need that anymore. Yeah. You put it in the water and stop chanting that name also. Yeah. Like that, they do this called Panchapasana system. When I heard it, I thought something fishy here. Why? Because, you know, how can somebody give up the person whom you are worshipping? If he is the master, that didn't sound well. Then later on, when I read Shri Prabhupada's books, things became crystal clear for me. So he said, these are impersonless. They think ultimately God is impersonal. And then he takes on different forms of different devatas. Therefore, you can worship any form you want. You can worship Ganesha, or Kartikeya, or Shiva, or Shakti. Ultimately, they are all Supreme Brahman only. Huh? You can worship and then you put them in Visarja. Huh? And then you merge in the Brahman and then you become, you are only God yourself. This kind of understanding they have huh? in person. But Vaishnava Silas, we teach us completely opposite. What Vaishnava Silas says, impersonal Brahman and Paramatma and Bhagavan, they are all three aspects of only one truth. Huh? What is, who knows that famous verse? Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavan I will show you that. If I show you a picture, you will know very easily. We have three people, jnanis, yogis and bhaktas. Hmm? So, jnanis realize impersonal future, uh, Brahman. And yogis realize the Paramatma in the heart, who is a 400 form of Vishnu. And bhaktas realize Bhagavan future, which is the personality of Lord Krishna. So, the jnanis use their mind to speculate about the absolute truth by considering the truth to be impersonal. And after they speculate for thousands of lives, then they come to the understanding, Bahunam Janmanamante Vasudeva Vasudeva So, after thousands of lives, they correctly understand that the ultimate truth is Bhagavan Vasudeva. It takes thousands of lives for that. For example, you ask somebody, where is the nose? He is the nose. He may say, how can it be so simple? I asked you, where is nose? You just showed it. I think I have to do more research. Then you ask, is it the nose? No. Is it the nose? No. Yeah. Is it the nose? No. And then after Bahu Nam Jan Manama, then this is the nose, you find. Hmm? Like that. Finally, they'll come to the same truth. But after? No. Yeah, a lot of research. They won't immediately accept. Bhakta means in our Ohapan. It comes in Guru Parampara. Guru tells you, you immediately accept. So every devotee sitting here is not ordinary devotee. Understand that. See, why we have to respect Vaishnava? Vaishnava means a submissive jiva. Hmm? The jiva who is ready to come into temple and bow down to the deity. Hmm? And that jiva who is ready to bow down to Vaishnava Guru. And the jiva who is willing to listen, hear and accept the truth. The submissiveness has come in you after millions of lifetimes of rotating in the cycle of birth and death. That is the reason why we should respect all the Vaishnavas. Hmm? The dust of Vaishnava is very great because even the Chaturvida Bhajan Tema, we say, you know, Artho, Artho, Artarte, Jignasu, even they are not ordinary. Because Krishna says, Udara Sarva Yevete, Jnani Tatpai He says, these souls are magnanimous souls, Krishna says. Although they have a desire for wealth, they have a desire to get rid of the sufferings, or they are Jignasu, they are inquisitive, hmm? or they are Jnanis who uh, are searching after the personality of Godhead. Eventually, they become personless, these jnanis. Huh? These four types of people who come to our temples, they are very, very special devotees. Krishna says they are magnanimous souls. Hmm? Why? Because after wandering in the cycle of birth and death and going to hundreds and thousands of devatas, they have at last come to Krishna's temple. Hmm? So, uh, uh, therefore, you will find the jnani with impersonal understanding. After many, many lifetimes, then he becomes a yogi who understands the personality of God. Now he is not searching anymore. He found out God. Who is God? Vishnu. Huh? 400 form. He found out. But then he doesn't do any seva for God. He just sits in meditates. Just is seeing Vishnu and saying, how great you are. How wonderful you are. You are Ananta Poddi Brahma Danayan. Huh? You are the Anadhata. You are the Antarya in the heart of everybody. 
he is admiring the lord ha huh? he is seva involved in shantarati ha huh? he is only admiring the lord and then you become bhakta where you engage in seva of the lord to bhagwan correct na no? now you can compare these three stages to na uh, in a government of india parliament in delhi and house of the prime minister and the home of the prime minister three things you can compare correct right, no the government of india can you draw a picture you can't draw a picture of government government is impersonal but the parliament house in which prime minister is present he is personal but that people treat him with great reverence and respect no on 15 dollars you say people salute no army navy air force everybody salutes them correct right, no he is dealt with in a very respectful manner from a distance no he receives all salutes salutations but at home when he goes you know he is served by his you know mother and father with great love correct right? so in front of his mother he is bowing down correct you know you, you might have seen the picture of our prime minister of india bowing to his mother no? so in parliament you will never bow to anybody everybody else will bow him bow to him no? but here you will see at his home he bows to his mother so in bhagwan realization krishna lips the sandals of nanda baba no? are you find uh, in krishna is doing services what the ashoda orders him no? ashoda is telling bring that vessel he goes and brings that vessel mm-hmm. is following the order of his devotees or arjuna is asking him sene or ibe or mati radam stapayane krishna is driving the chariot in serving his devotees so that is bhagwan realization so which is the most intimate in this wow. one realization is most intimate but all the three are one truth only but they are perceived in three different ways no like that he says so gnani is perceived the lord as impersonal yogi is as vishnu in the heart Uh, that is Shri Daksha Vishnu and Bhaktas realize him as Bhagwan with whom they interact regularly. They don't see him in the heart alone. They also interact because Dwaraka Bhaktas are telling Krishna, "Sai Pista Panam Api Dura Darshanam." They are saying, "My dear Lord, Lord Dwaraka Dish, you know the devatas go to the milk ocean to report to you about some demon, along with Brahma, but can they see you very nearby? No, in the milk ocean, which is vast." you were way inside huh? and you are lying in the ananta shesh huh? and the ocean waves are rising high up and down and you are lying down from a distance they have to see you try pishta pana means devatas dura darshanam means darshan is not nikat darshanam it is they see you from far away they can see your body very effulgent and bluish very attractive and they just bow down to you that is their relation with you Whereas we Dwaraka Vasis are seeing you so near, you can see your face, you can see your smile, we can hear your speech. Many of uh, Dwaraka Vasis can touch you. We are so fortunate, like the Dwaraka Vasis say. Right? So between the Paramatma Vasis and Bhaktas, who is more fortunate? Bhaktas. So Bhaktas interact with Krishna. Like Ashoda can take Krishna on the lap. She can take the absolute truth on her lap. She can feed him milk. Similarly, friends can climb on his shoulder. sometimes krishna climbs on their shoulder and then see that how intimate relationship gopis can dance with them hmm? you know cows are joyful that we are giving our milk to krishna service ha huh? yala getting to serve the lord very personally hmm? so in the 10th canto brahma ji is telling a very beautiful verse hmm? he is saying tavat tavat dagadayaste na tavat karagriham griham Kavat mohom grinegado, yavat Krishna nate jana. He is telling uh, in this world, tavat raga deyas tena. In this world, the attachments steal away all good qualities from people. Like Dhrdrasha was attached to Dhrdrana, you know that attachment spoiled him and the whole dynasty. Tavat kara griham griham. There are millionaires. If you see their home, they have big walls and a big door. And they are written outside. They were our dogs, so sadhus cannot put their feet at all inside them. So which means they are living in a home which only has become a jail for them. He is saying, "Tavat kara griham griham, griham griham has become kara griham for them because they arrest themselves in home and say nobody, no religious pious person should come inside, and we will just ruin ourselves and uh, prepare our way to hell. Many of them are drinking, smoking, and spoiling their life. That has become a jail for them." Tavat mohongri nigado, he says, like a lion is very mighty. 
powerful but they put some foot shackles for the lion in the forest when lion walks over the grass those shackles catch his feet and the lion is screaming he cannot escape huh? lions are caught like that similarly the moha which means what is moha uh, uh, illusion illusory attachments huh? in this world so the attachments in this world like man for woman woman for man is one of the moha huh? our attachment to money attachment to uh, we we say attachment to land attachment to gold attachment to women attachment to position and post there are five p's that can pinch you you know what are the five p's penny position possession pleasure and one more thing ah people attachment to people people huh? so these are called five p's that can pinch you these are the five attachments called moha huh? yeah so kaabad mohongri nigado he says people are generally caught by this attachments in this world but he is saying that yavat krishna te janaha what is the meaning of that vijibas is the ladies who are milking the cows they were thinking that i will make butter with this milk and then krishna will come and steal huh? they were thinking like that and there were other gopis who were cooking in the kitchen and tending to the babies but while doing that they were always singing songs about krishna hmm? they were uh, very fond of krishna's leelas during the day uh, and then they will hear from their sons and then next day they will make a song and keep singing hmm? in vrindavan every mother father thought that krishna is not yashoda's child she is a child of the whole braj hmm? everybody's child so they were doing activities externally with their hands and legs they were singing songs with their mouth in the heart they were fondly remembering krishna's playful pranks uh, is uh, naughty activities mischievous activities so krishna filled their hearts huh? like you will read in that uh, 10th canto 9th chapter like yashoda is on the diwali day when she is uh, uh, charney huh? that time her bangles and her earrings are all moving to and fro and then making a sound like we make with kartal like that's making sounds huh? so she is churning with her hands and the instruments are playing and she her eyes her eyes are semi closed and she is in a state of samadhi uh, she is smiling also because she is remembering krishna's activities and uh, and she is putting up a song huh? making her own song on krishna in vrindavan even today rajabas is you know any past time you say they can make a song immediately they she, she made a song about krishna's activities and uh, uh, she was singing hmm? there is one very famous uh, poet in south india called uttkad ramasubramanya you know you must have heard the songs like he, he puts up a song vishamakara kanna and that kind of songs they are like folk songs huh? uh, activities of krishna which are very charming to the heart the one line i will sing from that song hmm? because my sister's family is here they'll be happy sing in tamil hmm? one song hmm? nilame ham pole yerupan padinalo nindil vandu kudi yerupan kolam pullam kuralu di gopigale kallamaadi konjam pole venai daadi endru ketu maatam aadum vishamakara kan vishamata kannan what is he saying He is saying Nila Meham Pole Rupan means Krishna's body is like a bluish uh, sapphire or like a fresh monsoon cloud, hmm. and if anybody sings his songs about him with love, he makes their heart his house. He is saying he says that body na lo nengil vandu kudi Rupan, which means if you sing a song about him with affection. affectionately remembering him he will occupy your he will come and reside in your house without your permission suddenly you will find him sitting inside huh? because he is a thief huh? thief doesn't take permission to steal huh? not only he will come to your heart he will steal your heart also huh? and nenjil vandu kudi and then he is saying polam pullam kodalu odi gopi vale kalla maadi so there are the elderly gopis who are yashoda's friends so they would bring different items for him like uh, somebody would bring laddu somebody would bring you know the rock candy uh, somebody would bring rabdi somebody would bring 
know, butter, you know, they all would bring. And they would call Krishna to come. They would say that, Pana, if you sing, you know, we will give you this gift. Because they knew very well that these are his favorites, most favorite items. You know. They would bring those and see, very clearly this shows that their intention was to please him. You know. If you take rabadi, if you take, you know, rock candy, if you take makan, definitely Krishna will come running to us. You know. So Krishna would go running to them and uh, they all would make a circle and sit and tell Krishna to sing. Krishna would say, you all have brought so many nice gifts for me, why only sing? I will dance also. So he would sing and dance. And they would be so charmed and pleased, everybody will give away what they have brought for him. In this way, Vrindavan, these ladies never knew Krishna is Supreme Lord. They were transcendently ignorant of Krishna's supremacy, which is called what Maya? Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya makes them forget Krishna's supremacy so that they can relish the joy of feeling vatsalya bhav hmm, for Krishna. So, yeah, in the same manner, the gopis, uh, they felt madhuri bhav with Krishna. He would uh, play many pranks uh, with gopis also, hmm, very naughty pranks. Once, uh, one, one day when Krishna came out of his Nandabhavan, he heard one fruit vendor lady selling this jamun, you know, jamun is blackberry. That has a special taste. You you all know jamun? Yeah. So she was selling. So Krishna wanted to eat it. Because in those days, they won't pay money. You have to give some item. And then you get the fruits. So Krishna looked around. Next to his house, there was a gopi who was uh, drawing rangoli. And she had a lot of bangles in her hand. So Krishna ran there and picked up her hand and took out one bangle. And then he went to his house and then the Brahman lady, he called her, gave this bangle to her, picked up both armfuls of Jaman and just turned around, gave a big smile to Gopi and ran inside the house. So, and the Gopi didn't even sit down, she was shocked. This fellow snatched my hand and took away the bangle and went. So that day when Gopi met all, all her friends, she said, Do you know what happened today? Look at this Kana, you know, he snatched the bangle from my hand, you know, and he purchased the jamun with that. And some gopi said, how dare he did that, you should complain to Yashoda about it. One gopi said. Another gopi said, if Krishna took one bangle, I would have shown my other hand also, take another one also. She said, one gopi said, I would have given all my bangles to him, if you ask me. So in this way, they were doing prajalpa, but that prajalpa is called transcendental prajalpa. What prajalpa? In uh, Radha Gopinath temple, Chopati, there is a, in that altar, they have many animals besides the cow and, uh, uh, besides the cow and calf, they have deer, they have peacock, they have monkeys also. So there are two monkeys. So when I had joined uh, full time in 1994, I was there in the temple there. Till 95, I was there. So one of the days, suddenly I saw somebody is putting a hand around my shoulder. I thought maybe Gaurang Prabhu. Hmm? So I turned around and so it was my spiritual master. Hmm? I shot there, he's putting hand around. So he was asking, Radhikram, look at those monkeys in the altar. He said, Do you know what they are doing? I said, Maharaj, I think they seem to be talking to each other. Hmm? And uh, there are also parrots also in the top. You know, Shuka and Shari, they also talk. Hmm? So I said, Maharaj, I think they are talking to each other. So he asked me, Do you know what they are talking? He asked me, I said, yes. That uh, maybe you can tell. No, I don't know, Maharaj. Maharaj, they are doing transcendental prajalpa, he said. What prajalpa? Transcendental prajalpa means talk about Radha and Krishna. Huh? Talk about Krishna's activities and desires and pleasures. Anyonyama asit sanjalpa uttama shloka chetasam kauravendra purastrinam sarvashuti manoharaha Like that, there is a shloka in the first canto of Bhagavatam. When Krishna left Hastinapur, huh? he was leaving Hastinapur, that time, all the Kauravendra Purastri, huh? the Kauravas wives, they all had climbed up on the top of the roof. Huh? And from there, they were showering flowers, they were watching Krishna leaving. And they were talking amongst themselves. People talk, no? Huh? Gen- generally, you see, huh? you, if there are women, you tell women to make garland, along with that garland making, there will be talk also. Huh? Of course, as long as they don't quarrel, it's good. Huh? So, if we find them quarreling, then we put a recording lecture. You hear the lecture and don't quarrel, and I say. 
But these women were not quarreling. They were not doing ordinary prajalpa. You know what they were talking? They were saying, the personality who is going, walking in front of our eyes, is the same person who is lying in the causal ocean and creating millions of universes. And by his glance, you know, he is putting all the jivas into the material creation. And he is doing such a great work. But here he is walking like one of the cousins of the Pandavas. Mm -hmm. How fortunate are the Pandavas? More fortunate are those who are living in Braj, in Vrindavan. Because there, you know, he has a mother who controls them with a stick. Mm -hmm. He has a father whose sandals he carries on his head. Mm -hmm. And he has his covered boys who defeat him in the game. And he carries them on his shoulder. And there are gopis who are his eternal lovers who dance with him and gossip dance. So, who can be more fortunate than the Vajabhasis? They were talking. So, Sarva Shruti Manohara, it is said, their talk was so divine that even the Shrutis, huh? like Upanishads have to go and with folded palms, bow at the feet of these ladies and learn from them what is Bhakti Yoga. Hmm? Otherwise, the Upanishads can only tell you, you know, how, uh, you know, you are not, the absolute truth is imperceptible. I mean, it is beyond description, beyond words. Hmm? Yeah. Avang manasa gocharaha, which means the words and the mind cannot approach that absolute truth. It is very great. Great, great, they say, but what is that great truth? Huh? That these ladies are speaking about. The greatest truth is this Lord Krishna, hmm? who is Parabrahma. Hmm? So, hmm. therefore, the jnanis, yogis, and bhaktas, amongst them, the bhaktas, the vajabhasis, they were appearing like ordinary householders. Hmm? When all of you here sitting here, you know, you, your husband, wife, you have job, or you are a homemaker, you are begetting children and raising children. Uh, but in your household, if Krishna can become a very prominent uh, personality in your house. Just making an altar at home alone is not sufficient. Because I have seen, sometimes we go for deity welcoming to somebody's house. And we welcome the deity and big festival is celebrated and big feast is served to all. But after one year, two years, we find that the deities are not so well taken care or sometimes the children are taking care, parents have no time. Uh, and there is a kind of little negligence or it looks like a routine. Uh, but in homes where the grihasas, you know, they lovingly serve the deities <coughs> and they invite the people around, feed them prasad, give them classes, perform sankirtan and regularly put up festivals like Ram Nami, Janmashtami, you know, like Damodar festival, and, you know, different, different festivals at home, invite devotees. It should be a very vibrant uh, educational center hmm? where knowledge is Bhakti Ruksha happens. And, uh, you know, uh, actually in the path of Bhakti Yoga, some amount of effort has to be put. Like you see, we, we, we take away the old verse from the altar and we offer fresh flowers. Correct, no? You take the old fruits from the altar and then distribute to the people as prasad. And then we put new fruits there. And then you take the lamp and pour oil and then you lit up the lamp. You know, if you do that every day. So these are all services, devotional services. Then you bow down to Lord, clean the altar also. Once you do that, why Lord has kept these things? Because if you go to the altar and do this type of services, you will at least look at his face at that time. And then you will remember some of his qualities some of his playful pastimes. Mm -hmm. And then that will touch your heart. Little by little, the love will develop. But unfortunately, nowadays people have many electric items. They have electric agarbati. You have seen that? It has got two red tips. You have seen that? And they have a low voltage lamp also. They put the low voltage. And they have a flower garland which is completely made of plastic flowers. They just put that. Because they feel we don't have to change it every day. You know, Every day why to change it. So plastic flower garland, uh, electric agarbati, low voltage lamp, what is going on? Huh? No. Where is the possibility of our uh, exchanging uh, any affection with the Lord uh, in the altar? Hmm? You should not take the Lord so cheaply. Do you eat, uh, you know, like you are offering artificial flower, do you eat artificial food, uh, plastic food do you eat? Huh? You want fresh organic food for you? Huh? You should also offer Lord something fresh also. So, 
in this way the bhakti la pata bhakti yoga the intent of the devotee comes to be known to the lord by the heart of the devotee and the activities of the devotee it becomes very observable mm-hmm. yeah. so the vijayabhasis actually at every moment they were entering some service to the lord mm-hmm. they were also singing the lord's names moh mein naam hath mein kaam man mein ram yeah. in this way lord the lord was present in their heart they were doing activities for krishna they were talking about his playful pastimes yeah, like i told you now so in this way the vrindavan was bustling with laughter and joking about because krishna was a very charming personality uh, the most sporty pastimes he displayed in vrindavan hmm? there are kurukshetra pastimes with which we begin bhagavad gita and then we go to shrimad bhagavatam where we hear his playful pranks in vrindavan he did so in the in the bhagavan aspect you will see one deals with the lord so intimately hmm? whereas in the gnani's level you see one doesn't even know the form of the lord also you only get a vague picture how like this you see when you are going in a train mountain looks like this you see hmm. from a distance looks very vague hazy huh? and then when the train goes draws little more nearer it looks like this correct right? looks more clear now so this is like brahman aspect this is paramatma aspect. but when the train goes even more near see some people are coming down going up see that means you see some houses people that is bhagwan aspect so proper gives this example mountain is same but from different distances it looks different brahmaiti paramatmaiti bhagwan similarly when gnanis look at the absolute truth they see like this oh they do the correct no aham brahma asmi aham brahma asmi i am spirit so i am spirit so they why the meditate which means i am not the material body i am spirit soul like that the meditate proper is saying if somebody has become an engineer you join infosys or microsoft and say i am computer engineer i am mm-hmm. okay sir you are computer engineer do some work <laughs> should you should you tell your engineer i should do the work no. so it is not enough to say what you are but you have to act according to that so bhakta means acting on the platform of brahman yani says he is brahman but bhakta acts on the platform of brahman so and then this is paramatma vadi sees that lord is the heart of every jeeva and every atom also he is present in every atom he is present in the heart of every jeeva yeah then the bhagavan aspect one understands ishwara paramahan krishna ಸಚಿದಾನಂದೇಗ್ರಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಷಣ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಸೋಗಮಪ್ತಕೌಂತೇಯಸ್ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾಮಹಂಬಲವತಾಂಚಾಹಂಕಾಮರಾಗವಿವರ್ಜಿ
you should take a fruit when you eat immediately you should think where did this fruit come from cause of all causes he says 14.4 what is it was aham bija yeah so krishna caused this fruit to happen and huh? and how it came the sun brought the rain shower and the tree grew and it produced the fruit but the seed of the tree was given by krishna and not only uh, uh, sun and moon are two eyes of the lord huh? the sun is one eye hot eye which produces the fruit and the cold eye is the moon which gave the juice in the fruit mm-hmm. so in this way krishna says the program for the fragrance in flowers where is it ar uh, punyogandha pratibhyam se the program for the juices in the fruits is where moon so that means these essences are coming from krishna you know krishna is the cause of all causes essence of everything and he is the best of everything krishna says i am not a pond of water i am not a lake i am the ocean huh? wherever you see ocean water krishna says i am that similarly i am not a small you know mound i am not a small mountain i am the mount everest he said because there is no mountain taller than mount everest so in this way he is the best of everything also all of you here don't you look for the best in this world indians want cheap and best bhakti yoga is cheap and best because if you want a bead bag it is very cheap any if you go to iskon temple and say sir i want to chant hari krishna can i get a mala take it immediately sir i don't have money can i get a copy of bhagavad gita take it the bhagavad gita is free bead beads are free prasad anukul prabhu's heart is a big heart he says let whole world come and eat prasad hmm. Hmm. this temple has been always like that in the beginning you know she will not like controlling the prasad you know. that any number of people come and take prasad and go so bhakti yoga is cheap and best also mm-hmm. on the other hand sinful activities are very costly and worst huh? like somebody want to you know drink liquor or smoke cigarette or eat tobacco you have to spend a lot of money and then you you, you spend money and invite suffering what a fool one must be huh? you know you give money and they, you you know you beat me you know take this thing this is it you are paying money and getting suffering foolishness bhakti yoga actually it's so easily i krishna has made it accessible mm-hmm. so in this way now we learned about this uh, brahman parmatma bhagavan mm-hmm. so the devotee's activity is may appear similar when prabhupada came to hyderabad he told the devotees please take me to tirupati huh? and prabhupada said in tirupati there is balaji huh? they worship him very nicely i want to go and see hmm? so devotees took him to balaji temple balaji temple they welcomed him like anything very grand welcome for prabhupada and his disciples they gave accommodation in very nice two big cottages they allotted for prabhupada and his disciples arranged for all mahaprasad from the deity and they took prabhupada and his disciples several times in one day prabhupada would go for darshan five six times huh? and then they allowed prabhupada to stand and take darshan for half an hour part 2 minutes one hour Uh, and proper disciples are given special darshan proper said see how how respectful they are learn from these fellows you know learn from sri vishnu knows how to serve you are selling so and proper showed the golden dome and said just see how gorgeously they are worshiping the lord huh? this is how the lord should be revered and respected you are saying so when they were coming to the sanctum sanctorum many people are chanting eight gondala vada govinda We are chanting like that. So Prabhupada told the devotees, "Let us chant Govindam, Adi Purusham, Aham." But then Prabhupada said, "Many of these people chant Govinda, Govinda, but they come to Govinda to ask something. But we only want to do one thing: Tamaham Bajami. We are telling Govinda, we have come to you to bow our head to you. You order us what you want us to do. That's why we are coming to you." Don't go to Govinda. The Govinda, Govinda, give me this gift. No one asks like that. Prabhupada said. So in this way, he was educating the disciples uh, all through. Then one pujari came and told Prabhupada that, uh, Swami Ji, the kind of donations we get here is enormous. Uh, and Prabhupada said, What are you planning to do with the donations? They said, uh, We thought we will make many more buildings here because too much money is coming. Prabhupada said, Don't do that. Instead, you spend this. for education purposes no? you have to educate people and help them know who balaji is proper as you know who balaji is they said you only tell us and and proper said balaji is krishna he said why 
Bala means child. Ji means respectable. Who is a respectable child? The one who is born in the jail of Kamsa. He is a child. He is called as Harim. And later on she saw, he became a small baby. He, she called him Sutam. Huh. Sutam means my baby. Harim means Supreme Lord, Hari. So Prabhupada said, he is Balaji. Bala means child and Ji means respectable. And the same Balaji only comes as Srinivas. Why he came? Because once Yashoda Ma told her, Krishna in Vrindavan you danced with all the gopis, but you only married all the queens of Dwaraka. Huh? But I didn't get to see any marriage. Huh? I didn't have the good fortune. Krishna said, don't worry. You come as Vakula Devi and I will come as Srinivas. Then you can see my marriage with Padmavati. So it's the same Yashoda comes as Vakula Devi. So, Balaji is not different from Krishna. In, in Tripati, he is existing as Balaji. In Ranganath, he is existing as Ranganath, uh, Ranganath Swami. In Kerala, he is Guru Ayurapan. If you go to Maharashtra, he is Vital Rukmini. Vital Rukmini is Dwarakadish and Rakuma is Rukmini. Uh, if you see Vital, Vital is standing like this. And uh, the next uh, sanctum, you will see Rukmini is also standing like this. Next to her, there is one deity called Rai. She is standing. Who is Rai? Rai is Radharani. Huh? Yeah, Rai is Radharani. He said, you know, Jai Deva, Jai Deva, Jai Pandunga, Rai Chavallava, Rukmini Chavallava. Rai and Rukmini both are said. Rai is Radharani. So, Radha and Rukmini both are standing like this. Huh? There you will see. It. Because once Rukmini became upset with Krishna in Dwarka and then left and came to Pandarpur. But then Krishna had another already planned program in Pandarpur. One of his devotees was living there, named Kundli. So he thought, uh, you know, in one shot, two activities will be done. So he went and met the devotee and also met Rukmini also. So Dwarakadish comes there and he becomes Vital Rakhwai. Same Krishna. You go to Udaipur, he's standing as Srinathji. Correct, no? Yeah, everywhere. You go to Dwaraka, he's Dwarakadish. All over India, the Lord is worshipped in different uh, forms. But I was telling you, but Prabhupada was telling them that we should educate people about the Lord. They should worship the Lord. They should not do this. Uh, and then one pujari told Prabhupada, we are also planning to spend some other money for building Panchapasana temples. Prabhupada raised his eyebrows and said, see, she called the Ramanuja Charya, never instituted this. How are you people doing this? And then Prabhupada told them, that is, in the Panchapasana doers are those who give away in the Sarjan that they are Murtis, isn't it? Hmm? Whereas a Vaishnava never gives up the deity of the Lord. Eh? Lord is our eternal master, eternal lover. Eh? We will worship him all through our life. After death, we will continue worshipping him in the next life also. If you have to take a million lives. Mama Janmani Janmani Ishwari Tad Bhakti Rakhai And then we will go back to Godhead, we will continue to, you know, exchange the love with him and uh, you know, worship Him with our, all our hearts. The Vaishnavas, you know, love for the Lord is never uh, impeded or stopped at any point of time. Hmm? Yeah. Lakshanam bhakti yogasya nirgunasya uh, udahritam ahitu kyabjavahita ya bhakti purushottame mayanan yena bhavena bhaktim kuruvanti yedridham madar te tyaktakarmanaha tyakta svajana bandhavaha hmm? He's saying that my devotees have given up all the materialistic activities uh, uh, and uh, substituted by activities of devotional service in which they delight. They worship the deity, they bow down to deity, they decorate the deity, they celebrate festivals for deity, they offer boga to deity, they study the books in relation to Lord, uh, they go and preach in relation to Lord and they're distributing Prabhupada books, doing Harinam Sankirtan, Prasadam distribution. Rihastha, Brahmachari, no difference. Uh, all people who are heartily engaged in devotion service, these activities are transcendental completely. Mm. So, this is the main difference. In South India, there are pious people and there are Krishna devotees. Uh, there is a big difference between Astik and Bhakta. Mm. Nastik and Astik, everybody knows. <laughs> but Astik and Bhakta look very similar externally. Huh? But the Astik means they are eye centered, I mean mind centered. Huh? Now, Astik means you know that. He is an ungrateful fool, huh? Nastik. Whereas, Bhaktas, they are not only grateful, they have given their heart to the Lord, as I told you. 
They never give up the service to the Lord. That's why Narada is telling here, Bhakti Yoga path is beyond karma, jnana, yoga, everything. Huh? It is a supreme path. And anyone who has got uh, the fortune of getting a Vaishnava Guru, he took shelter. And His Holiness Gopaksha Maharaj was studying in uh, Canada, Montreal. He was a college-going student. Later on, I heard that he got placed in Coca-Cola in the top position, like a CEO type of position, very big position, was working. So, he was in search of God and he came to the temple, uh, Montreal temple. And uh, devotees uh, told about Prabhupada and he became very inspired. He hadn't seen Prabhupada. So, before Prabhupada arrived there, they gave him seva of cleaning the room. Huh? He cleansed the Prabhupada's room, kept everything ready. And then when Prabhupada came, he offered obeisances and met him for the first time. Quickly, he became touched by Prabhupada's preaching. Hmm. And Prabhupada also told the devotees, he's the first Indian boy who is showing so much interest. All of you pay, you know, pay attention to him. He is going to take a big responsibility. Hmm. And then devotees also took care of him. And then he would come on a Sunday. Huh? He would come for 12.30 Arati, then attend the Sunday peace program, take peace, hang around with devotees, asking questions and everything. Huh? At night, he will take milk along with Krishna book reading. At 9.30, he will leave. Can you imagine? Morning 12.30, you come and 9.30, you leave. Hmm? So, when he was working in the company, he was drawing a very big sum of money. But after becoming initiated by Prabhupada, he was so pleased with Prabhupada, he would bring all the salary and give it to Prabhupada. Hmm? Prabhupada would say, how will you run your family hmm? if you are giving everything to me? He would say that, keep it with you, Prabhupada. Whenever I want something, I'll take from you. Hmm? He would say like that. That's the way he dedicated himself. Very soon he left all the worldly ties and dedicated his life. And uh, uh, Prabhupada made him the trustee of uh, BBT and told him to print and publish books and distribute. In 80 languages, uh, he uh, got them translated and published. Uh, he did a lot of hard work in terms of trying getting them translated and published and making BBTs in different places, including Russia and distributing the books, taking tremendous risk in Iron Curtain countries. Yeah. So, uh, he is one shining example of a highly dedicated, fully devoted, loyal uh, disciple of Srila Prabhupada. And uh, towards the last part of his life now, he gave a will. Huh? Many of you might have heard the will. Will is so pure will, he says, never leave his con, always be loyal to his con. Mm. And don't do anything, it's independent activities, connect everything to this con. So, such a very, very beautiful will he wrote. And uh, just as we appreciate Prabhupada's books for the next 10,000 years, this will is exactly in alignment with what Prabhupada would want. Huh? So, let this will go on forever for all the future devotees of his con. If they stick to this will, they will stick to Prabhupada's will also. Prabhupada's desire. So, when, uh, then Prabhupada told the Tirupati uh, Pujaris that, you know, you, we, we have to teach Ananya Bhakti, Shuddha Bhakti. Ananya Bhakti doesn't mean you love Krishna and you hate the demigods or devatas. Yeah. Actually, devatas are all assisting hands of the Lord. And they have to be affectionately treated. Huh? Like I was telling about Ganesh. Similarly, when I go to Madurai, Meenakshi Aman. Who is Meenakshi? She is sister of Krishna. Correct, no? Correct. Because Vishnu is giving Meenakshi in marriage to whom? Not Shiva. How many of you have seen that? Murti, you have seen that. Correct? In many mar marriage invitations, they put that. In South India, you must have seen that. Huh? So, if you see Devi Meenakshi as a sister of Krishna, Ganesh as son of Devi, huh? so you have no reason to hate them. They all are wonderful devotees of the Lord. Yam Brahma Varunendra Rudra Marutas Tulmanti Devai Stavai Vedai Sangha Padakrama Upanishadai Gayanti Yam Samaga Dhyana Vastita Tadgate Namanasa Pashyanti Yam Yogino Yasyantam Navidus Turasuragana Deva Yatas Vainamo. See, this verse says that first line says Yam Brahma Varuna Indra Rudra Maruta. And how do we deal with the Devatas? The another verse. Humukshavo, Ghora Rupan, Hitva, Bhutapati Nata, Narayana Kalashantan, Vajantihi Anasu Yavaha. In my school days, I used to go in a cycle to one Devi temple. 
on the way, I would bow down to Devi and then proceed ahead. One day, I was shocked to see that they were cutting almost a dozen cocks. Hmm? The cocks were all... They were making sounds. Huh? They were cutting the necks. Here and there, they were all flapping their wings. That was the last day I went to the temple. From outside only, I bowed down and ran away. You know? I was shocked. Temple is a holy place. Why they are killing these poor creatures? I, I really cried hmm? seeing that. But later when I came to Iskana, I understood that there is a Tamasic worship, Rajasic worship and Sattvic worship. In Tamasic worship, people kill goats and they kill cocks and things like that. And they feed the people in the name of offering to Bali or something like that. People even drink also. Nowadays, we have this Ganesh Chaturthi or this uh, uh, Vijay Dashami. Uh, people are putting some Western music. And dunk, 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 dunk. You have seen that, huh? The dancing, you know, throwing colors and everything. Uh, yeah. uh, they are uh, doing that. And uh, and sometimes they put even displays and things like that, which are not very appropriate. Because they are, basically, we can't criticize them, but we feel pity for them. Because they are not knowledgeable. For us, Prabhupada gave us the books. Huh? So, the Kamasika worship is done like that, but Sattvic worship is done for three deities. Lakshmi Narayan, Sitaram and Radha Krishna. Correct? On? Three deities. And this, this worship was done with Tulasi Manjari. You offer in the vegetarian food and offer to Lord. And you also follow the four regulatory principles. Hmm? You follow the Pancharatri Gividi and Bhagavat Vidhi both. It's a very pure process. So such people who follow the uh, Bhagavat Vidhi people, what is their attitude towards Devatas? They don't look down upon the Devata worshippers. People who worship, you know, uh, Chandi, Chamundi, Badrakali, or Maha, Kala Bhairava, Shmashana Bhairava, and all that people worship. So, what devotees think of them, they think that this is also within the Vedic path only. Huh? But according to their mode, they are given this worship. And all the devatas are all assisting hands of the Lord. There is one verse which says, Narayana Paraveda Deva Narayana Angaja. Bhagavatam says that. Huh? They are all Deva, Narayana, Angaja means they are born from the limbs of Narayana and they are assisting limbs of Lord Narayana. So therefore he says that Vajantihi Anasu Yavaha. Never offend demigod, never ridicule them, never fight against them foolishly, never argue against them, never criticize them. Madhvacharya says if you criticize demigods, then you will find difficulty in advancing in your Bhakti Yoga also. He said, even it will be offensive. He said, then you cannot progress properly in Bhakti. Then how do we treat demigods? Treat them with, treat devatas with respect. At the same time, know that just like we have 32 uh, chief ministers in India, but how many prime ministers? That is like, Ananda Bhakti is like that. Krishna is one supreme. All the Yekala, Ishwara Krishna, Parsava Prithya. So those who understand this Ananda Bhakti properly, they are following Bhakti Yoga. Otherwise, those who are following Karma, Jnana, Yoga, those are those parts are eye centered parts. Karma is think I want to enjoy. Jnana is think I want to be free from suffering. Yogi is think I want Siddhis. So what is the reference point? I. Bhaktas are thinking, who is Krishna's mother? Who is Krishna's father? Who is Krishna's sweetheart? Who is Krishna's dear animal? Who, which is Krishna's dear mountain? Which is Krishna's dear river? When I was asking the question, I know you all know the answer. Hmm? And each of its answer is coming in your mind, correct? So this is what devotees are thinking about. No? In this way, what is the reference point for a devotee? Therefore, you go back home, back to Godhead. Srila Prabhupada ki. Thank you very much. Correct.